Hi there guys, Barry from Copper vs Glass and welcome to part 2 of my super cheap home server build for under £250. So let's get started. So let's take a look at the parts list, shall we? The first part that I have is my processor. For £42 on dabs.com, I got an Intel Pentium processor, which is the G3220 model, which is a dual core processor running at about 3 GHz. It does come with a very basic Intel packaging, as you would expect. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. Now, the first thing we're going to do is when we open it, we'll find the processor is actually sat on the top of the box in its own little compartment in nice, tough, clear plastic packaging because, of course, we want to keep it nice and safe. Let's take a look. We'll just pop it open here, and you can see that it's uh, fairly basic. It's got the model number on the processor just at the top there. Uh, out the back, you'll notice that it doesn't have any pins protruding from it. Um, I haven't built a PC in a long time, and actually this surprised me. I was expecting to see pins sticking out the back, but actually the pins are on the motherboard. If we take a look at the fan, it's not the chunkiest of fans. It's actually quite small, and it's not very high, um, but actually, as we'll find out later on, this is actually quite good, and it would have been very bad if it was any taller than it is here. And of course, it comes with thermal paste built in on the bottom. Next is the hard drive. I got a great deal here for £43 on dabs.com again, which is a 120GB Kingston 6 gigab 6 gigabit per second SSD. Um, it's a great deal and I picked that up as soon as I saw it. For about £30 I got off dabs.com again, just a simple kit of 4GB of 1600MHz RAM. Uh, it's two sticks of two, uh, which will do just nicely for what I need in this PC. Lastly, we have the motherboard, which is £43 again from Dabs. It's the Asus H81i Plus. As you can see on the box here, it's ready for Windows 8.1. It's 4K HD ready, and it comes with a nice mouse interface BIOS. If we just open it up here, we'll just take the motherboard out the top just to start with, but then we'll actually just have a quick look at what else comes in the box. You, of course, have your I.O. shield for the back of the motherboard. You've got some nice SATA connections here. There are actually 6 gigabit cables, one with a nice L shape. You get two of those. And the rest is just the simple documentation for the motherboard itself. Let's go ahead and take a look at the motherboard and see what it can offer. Now we're taking a look at the hard drive, uh, the motherboard, sorry, we can see everything it has on here. We've got two 6 gigabit SATA connections and two 3 gigabits per second SATAs. We have a PCI Express slot here, we have USB 3 of course, the processor socket, two DIMM slots for up to 1600 MHz, we have our CPU and one case fan socket up the top, and we have the I.O. ports around the back, we've got a traditional keyboard and mouse socket, uh, USB 2, HDMI which supports up to 4K, DVI and VGA, two three US USB 3s, another USB 2, Ethernet and audio. Now let's take a look at the actual installation of the thing here. Uh, again, I haven't built a PC in a few years and it was really good to get back to this. Uh, and I actually found it quite easy. I only had to refer to the manual a few times. The first thing, of course, we're going to do is install the processor. This is a simple case of undoing the flap and the latch. Popping the processor in, making sure you're matching the colored triangle on the side to make sure it's orientated properly and pushing down the latch. Next is the fan, which just pops in here with some little nice uh, attachments. And of course, we're going to pop in the, K the CPU fan up to the top. I orientated the fan in such a way that there wasn't much loose cable on that CPU fan up the top. And that's pretty much it for the CPU and fan. Let's now move on to the next part, which is going to be the RAM. RAM is super easy to install, you just have to make sure you get the notch in the right place because one side is longer than the other in terms of how you put it into the slot and it just clicks in nicely with the latch at the end. Now that we've got those two bits put in, uh, we can start actually putting it into the case. Now you'll see uh, we got these uh, little, what they're called motherboard standoffs, uh, which essentially raise the motherboard from the bottom of the case to stop things like vibrations. Uh, and you actually get this handy little chuck that comes with it that helps you screw in these uh, motherboard standoffs into the bottom of the case. So I'm just going to put all these in here uh, into the appropriate position, of course, um, and then we'll start putting in the motherboard. I did actually have a slight bit of trouble putting the motherboard in um, because the standoffs made it quite difficult to actually put the motherboard into the back of the I.O. shield because the I.O. shield at the back is actually quite springy. Um, so I actually had to push it down and hold it into position uh, while I did up at least one screw to keep it in position 
Um, and once that's all done, um, it was seated in there nicely and tight. Uh, not too tight, of course, you don't want to risk cracking the motherboard. And here we go, just looking at the motherboard in place, ready to go. So this is basically everything guys uh, put together. I didn't film the actual uh, installation of the power supply and cables because it took me about two hours to do so because it was really fiddly uh, and I like all my cables to be nice and neat and tidy. But anyway, this is the end result. And as you can see, everything's routed around the outside of the case. The big chunky black one there is the USB 3 cable. And you can see everything's wearing away now because it is on as I'm just doing some testing. As you can see, I put my uh, SSD on the top into the CD drive because of course I'm not having a CD drive. And the only thing I would say about the installation of this is the 4-pin power connector for the CPU is in a very difficult place to reach, especially if you've installed the motherboard and the power supply. You basically can't reach the power supply, uh, CPU power supply underneath everything. So I actually had to take it a little bit apart to do that first. Uh, and you'll probably be able to see that in the very far left-hand corner up the top. All in all, I think this is a really great build. Um, and it does everything I pretty much need it to. Again, it's really just going to be running things like Plex and backups, um, so it doesn't need to be too beefy, and I think it's going to do really well. If you have any questions about this build, guys, or you want any more tips and tricks, uh, do let me know. But this is my home server build for less than £250, and I'm Barry from Copper vs Glass, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.